Um, I'm with Eloise Naver, who is a student at Cardiff University and is on placement with us for a whole year, aren't you? Annie? Yeah, yeah. Um, I started in uh, August last year, so um, I think I'm six months in now, but yeah. uh, we'll be here f- till, until June or June, July. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, it's been really good. And so your main focus of study is what then, Ellie? Well, I'm studying ecology in university, mm-hmm. but uh, here I've been given a project on harvest mice, and it's based on the surveying methods of harvest mice. So, well, I've been looking at different ways of uh, surveying them in the field. Brilliant. And, so yeah. harvest mice, what, what's so interesting about harvest mice then? Let me well, tell us about harvest mice. Well, uh, harvest mice are, are the smallest British rodent. They're they're pretty small. They're um, when adult, they will only well approximately weigh six grams. So, right. so you can little, get then. yeah an idea of how small they are. Harvest mice, uh, well, they're so cute. But <laughs> <laughs> they um, they have like a blunt muzzle and um, furry ears. And their adult fur colour is um, a russet orange with um, a white stomach. We can see just yeah. on the picture here, can't we? Yes. Actually, we're looking at um, a couple of beautiful pictures of harvest mice. Um, yes, yeah, so you can really see they're quite gingery, aren't they? Yeah. I yes. But uh, the juveniles are brown. So this is an adult. Yeah. This is um, one of the education harvest mice based at uh, Park Slip. Right, so these are harvest mice that we have in captivity, that were born in captivity, so we can't release them, no. um, that we have at Park Slip Nature Centre, who we wish we bring out so that we can show people, because actually it's very hard to spot them, isn't it? As you said, yes. they're small. Yeah, it is, it is very hard to spot them, and their, their faeces is only three millimetres, so you can't really do any sort of scat tracking or anything mm-hmm. like that you you know you you can't look for a footprint whereas a, a rat or a, a water vole um you can see footprints but mm. these guys are just too small so you have to go and think out the box a bit but uh, more traditional methods of trapping or um nest searching um in ways to see these guys so this is what you've been doing then isn't it last year we sort of look at some of these photos now you can see we're we're looking for the nests. In fact, there's, there's a couple of photos of you looking for nests out in the fields at Hark Slip. So, um, how do you spot them though? Because actually, if we go on to the next one, yes, you can see like they're they're pretty much disguised by the grass, aren't they? They're, there's very little that you can spot. Yeah. So, um, the harvest mouse is the only mouse that will use living fo- foliage to um, make its nest. It'll shred the leaves and actually weave it into the living stem mm. so you get a, a a nest and when i say nest it's the breeding nest is only 10 centimeters in diameter it's tiny, so it's it? really small yes and the um, winter nest or the non-breeding nest is less than five centimeters this is a pro- yeah this is okay. approximate mes- measurement obviously you get bigger out in the field but um it is hard nest searching and in summer you, you have to have a trained eye to mm-hmm. to find these nests so I, when I carried out the nest searches I did it in autumn where the vegetation had died down and obviously the nests are easier to see them because mm-hmm. you can actually see them hanging from the vegetation right. when yeah. the, the falls but uh, do you think this is one of the species then that's sort of under recorded? Do we think there's less of them than there actually are because people just wouldn't spot them? Because, there's, like you say, all the reasons that you said yeah. they're so tiny, you wouldn't spot their scats, they, they're, they're so light they're not leaving footprints, mm. and their nests are virtually invisible to the naked eye unless you're really well trained to go mm. looking for them. Well, uh, maybe, yeah, I think possibly they are under surveyed. Mm. And even with nest nest searching you wouldn't be able to know how many mice are using that nest right. you wouldn't get an actual count of the mice that are in a particular meadow or reeves bed by just nest searching mm-hmm. it it gives an indication that they're there 
but mm. that there's a presence, but not how many you know populations or mm. that okay. there are. So this is basically, I mean, you can see a, a nest next to a watch. There, so you get a real indication to the size there, which is fantastic. But you've looked at different ways, then, haven't you, of doing these surveys to get a better idea of the, the mice? Yes. So we just um in that. Yes, my project entails different survey methods and I've been trapping them with um, traditional methods but with using long widths Mm. Um, and also the relatively new tube traps so I'm in a well, so I'm, these are humane traps. Yeah, I hum- yeah. Sorry, yeah, they're humane traps. Uh, basically, I bait them with seed, mm. and also um, I bait them with um, maggots. So if a shrew comes along, you know it won't starve because mm-hmm. there's a bit of controversial. By if we left, the yeah, if we left the, the traps too long, yeah. yeah, and with the shrew's high metabolisms they need to feed Mm -hmm. so that's why I put the maggots in there it's not because I'm attracting the shrews I'm trying to attract harvest mice Mm -hmm. but I have to cater for all small mammals basically but the the harvest mice will effectively walk into the the tunnel there's a small tunnel on Mm -hmm. on the front of the trap trigger the the, um, trip wire and be left in the trap when I say left in the trap I leave them for a maximum of five hours Mm -hmm. Because I I'm day trapping and they've got enough food and they've got bedding in there, mm-hmm. so it it is humane. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a comparison study between those mm. those traps, but uh, besides that, I've been carrying out an, another side of my project, which mm-hmm. entails um, using bait stations. Right, we've got a photo of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was the old design of the bait station. Mm-hmm. As you can see, it just, just just looks like a platform or a table. Mm. And essentially, that's what it was. Mm. It was a, a table dug in the middle of vegetation. The idea being, as you can see, there's mesh in the middle of the mm. table. Okay. The idea being that the we'd put the food in the mesh, attract harvest mice. The harvest mice would go into the mesh and eat, eat the, the bait. This was all recorded with Bushnell cameras. Mm. So we could see that the harvest mice were using these bait stations. Mm-hmm. That was in theory. Realistically, this did not happen. Right. It, because of the, we found that the, the design was attracting other species such as brown rat, um, wood mice. Mm-hmm. Um, we had dunnocks. We, we had dunnocks at one point, yes. And um, I've even found a, a common lizard basking <laughs> on the, on the. Uh, the platform, which which was lovely, but considering the projects so about the harvest, ma- yes, no. Yeah. So um, we we thought about the design, mm. and over the Christmas recess, I redesigned the the bait station. Right, and it's a very sophisticated design, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, don't know whether you could call it that. Um, basically, what it is, it's. Um, I wanted to have a design that was specific for harvest mice that would encourage harvest mice or the smaller mammals so eliminate the 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 brown rats mm-hmm. and the birds. Yeah. So um what is what the design is is a bird feeder hanging over millennia mm-hmm. grass tussocks. Yeah. Um and it's hanging or suspended by a broom pole <laughs> with an accessory hook from a, a bird feeder mm-hmm. that you'd have in your garden. So very high tech. But uh, <laughs> no, it, it seems to work in fairness to it. We It was just an experiment yeah. first. We put it out and within the, the first two days that it was mm-hmm. out, we had a successful footage of harvest mm-hmm. mice using it, so and this so works really well. That footage now, and it, yeah. you can see that um, it was both daytime and nighttime feeding going yeah. on, um, yeah. which is interesting. So well, harvest daytime. mice aren't nocturnal; they they are actually they're um, dusk mm-hmm. and and twilight. That's their sort of peak hours. Right. But they will, uh, whereas other mice are nocturnal, like the wood mouse, will only come at, out at night. Harvest mice will forage during the day as well, which we've pro- proven this by the, the footage. But um, the field that they're in now, the meadow, it's uh, 
it's quite wet and mm. the vegetation is reduced. As you can see from the, the footage from the old bait station mm. and the new bait station because the old bait station was surrounded by luscious mm-hmm. green yes, and now it's... Some uh, photos. As we can see from the previous <laughs> photo that's gone past, there's some lovely lush meadow sweet, which they love, don't they? They yes. love the meadow sweet we found. We, yeah, we found this out from the the educational mice mm-hmm. in the office that um, we try and collect natural food food yeah. sources that they have in the field. So um, they eat vegetation. Mm. Okay then, Ellie, tell us a little bit about like the habitat that harvest mice live in. Well, harvest mice like grassy habitat, so mm. like thick vegetation, so that their nesting habitat might include bramble. Mm. They don't use bramble for their nests, but the protection mm. and millennia, which is like thick grass right. that they actually use to weave their nest mm. but they're actually well known for using habitats such as reed beds mm. which is perfect for them because they their summer nest their breeding nest is above the ground and it's actually in say 30 to 60 centimeters mm. above the ground so it's in a stalk zone which the reed beds provide perfect habitat for mm. So that's sort of the habitat that they like, okay. thick vegetation. Yeah. So that kind of hides them away nicely yes. and keeps them well, safe. Yeah, they have to be safe because they're at the bottom of the food chain. They so, are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Ellie. Well, thank you. Really interesting. Thank you. Thank you.